By default, <clears throat> the items inside of our parent or our flex container will stretch to fill the height. So if we go ahead and try this, and if we were to change the height to, <clears throat> oh, what are we at? 200, we'll change this to 400 and run. You can see that the height will automatically adjust, okay? So let's go ahead and back out of this. And remember, the default is where the flex item will stretch to fill the height. So we can also align items based off of a baseline. And the baseline is the text inside, okay? Now, I'm not really sure how this would work out if you had multiple lines of type, but my guess is, um, I don't know. Well, I guess we could try it to see what happens. But basically, the baseline here is the baseline of your text. So just for giggles here, let's go ahead and see what happens. So if we look here, we see that we have a div and our div has an H1, an H2, an H3. Okay, I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to modify this and then we will see what happens. All right, so I've modified the H1 by adding another H1. We've added another H6. I've left H3 alone. And then I've added a couple of uh, small four here. So let's go ahead and run and see what happens. Okay, so what seems to be happening here is the base, the elements continue to align by the baseline of the first, uh, the first item. Okay, so I don't know if we've learned a whole bunch from that, but uh, we now can answer the question, what happens if we had multiple lines? And how would this affect the align items property? Okay, let's go ahead and back out and we'll continue to scroll down. We're about halfway through all of this information. As I mentioned before, there's a lot going on with Flex, but you can, you can use Flex at a basic level and it's still very powerful. It's still very, um, very helpful. There's just all of these other properties to, that you can work with and learn from. So let's go ahead and align content property. So this is used to align the flex lines. So you can see in the example above that we can go with space between and you can go with space around and you can go with stretch. So let's go ahead and test this out. So let's see where we are here. Content align, we have stretch and let's just help me remember here. So we have space uh, between and space around. So let's go ahead and change stretch, uh, stretch to space between. All right. So you can see that space is added between and then space around would probably give us equal space. So we have some on the top and the bottom. So space around. And you'll see how the elements now space out. All right, let's go ahead and close. And we'll continue down the page. Um, when I left off here, align center, this would place your content in the center of the parent. And then of course we can do flex start and flex end for either having our content start at the top or start down at the bottom. And of course we can have our content be in the center of the parent element. Now, this was something that was kind of a trick back in the day to get an element to be perfectly centered in um, both vertically and horizontally. 
And we could do this, but we had to be a bit clever as far as the type of position we used and also using negative um, uh, left margin based on the width of the element. So we had to be uh, kind of tricky to get this to work uh, not that long ago. But now all we have to do is tell an element to justify the content center. So it will, it will center itself on the X and then align item center and our element will align on the Y or the vertical. So this is something that, uh, or this is an aspect uh, that has made um, centering an object or an element, both vertically and horizontally, uh, a whole lot easier. Okay, child elements. So in a lot of the examples that have already, um, that you might've already gone through or we've gone through, basically this is just saying that when you tell an element to be flex, that its immediate descendants here are set to flex. So they're going to take on the behaviors which you give this element, okay? Now there's something that we'll take a look at later on and we use this trick, not really trick, but method in the 444 class for creating a mobile menu. And that's, you can call this a flex element and place other elements inside and then you're able to scroll through those elements, which is pretty cool, okay? But um, I'll, I'll, uh, we'll get into that more later. It's a bit more uh, technical. Okay, so basically this is just letting you know that this is the parent element, which the flex is added to. Anything you add the flex to, the immediate descendants take on those characteristics.